Oh yeah, hey guys, it's Mark Shea here. You're watching another episode of Exploring Australia. This time we're going on an overnight hike. I'll tell you all about it real soon. You ready? Check it out. Rev it up, pay the toll. Following the wild line to free our soul. The UHS on 25, we got a combo. Yeah, we're starting our hike. Starts on the beach. We're at the Budai or Budi National Park and we're about to walk eight kilometers up to McMaster's Beach but we're going to be camping at a place called Little Beach so we've got a whole bunch of gear to test out so I am chock-a-block and heavy it's got to be at least well it's, it's plus 20 kilos so that's way over 44 pounds so I'm probably closer to 50 pounds but it's a good test. There's a lot of things I'd be stripping back, especially if it's a longer hike with plenty of water sources. I'd um, reduce the water weight that I'm actually carrying. But because we're, this is a coastal walk, I'm not sure if there's any real spots to get water. So I've brought all the water I need. So it's just gonna be heavy on the way up, but on the way back, it should be a lot lighter. <laughs> anyway. Let's see how we go, eh? So we'll start the day from the very beginning. Check it out. Okay, 3.30 in the morning. Gotta get up early to get out there to the start of the trail for our overnight hike. Oh, running on a couple of hours sleep. It should be interesting. Let's see how we go. Finally made it, parked up. Now we're just getting the backpacks ready and heading off. Um, yeah, so now I can switch from my phone to the good camera, hopefully. <laughs> I'll probably be switching between the phone and the good camera for this vlog. So, yeah, it's like 5.30. Sun's about to come up, as you can see. And, yeah. So this should be fun. You can see the big backpack, oh my god. I'll try and get a photo or a bit of video just to show what I look like. <laughs> All right, off we go. <laughs> so this looks a bit funny. Just getting used to this pack here. Is, am I wondering why the day pack, as I mentioned in my, what's in my gear, what's in my pack video, um, it's a travel pack, it's not so much a backpacking pack. So, I don't have drink bottles, so I've got the day pack hooked onto the front, so I've got access to the water bottle pouches and that. But, we're finally here, and we finally started, now we're off. <laughs> so this is my monster pack. This is what I'm taking on the hike. And we've reached the start. So it's time to say goodbye to Putty Beach and start the walk. As you can see, Little Beach is 6.3 Ks. McMaster's Beach is 8.5 away according to the sign, but on Google it says eight. So all up it'll be 16, 9, 17 Ks that we're gonna be hiking, but we're gonna be camping at Little Beach. And the first part of it at the end of Putty Beach is stairs. So, Whew. Time to take, start hiking up the stairs. Ah! Spider web, spider web. So this is the beginning of the booty. I'm gonna call it booty. I think it's funny, a booty instead of boot eye. This is the beginning of the booty coaster walk. Let me make an adjustment. Go darker. I know it's dark here, but then you're gonna see where we started from. 
and there's Putty Beach. So that's where we came out, but we're parked up and around at the camping area. So let's do this. First view of the day. Ooh, make sure you bring your air guard. Lots of bugs, and mozzies, flies, moths. <laughs> but a beautiful sunrise. There's Putty Beach, that's where we came from. Didn't take long before we got some views. So I'm going first, basically as a web catcher. I'm the one that has to clear the pathway of webs with the trekking pole. Ooh. Ah. So. There's so many flies in that here. I don't feel sorry because the spiders aren't doing their job. I need to be catching more flies. Yeah, yeah. Spider web, spider web. Ah. I don't know if I can I don't pick it up. Oh yeah. out the sun's up we've been walking two hours <laughs> almost about an hour and a half now without the backpacks if you're doing this in a day trip there's, it's like 20 minutes half an hour but we got heavy backpacks and we're um, stopping away to film so look at the gorgeous views you get here Woo. So, I know everything seems overkill, but we got a lot of equipment that we're ca carrying. And what makes it a little bit more is we had huge storms last night. So everything is soaking wet. It's supposed to be 33 degrees today. That's Celsius. So after all the rain, the sun is going to evaporate that rain and make things so muggy and so humid. And yeah, we're already feeling it. Yeah, woo. But yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> oh. Just change hands here. Eh? But I know, my, my setup looks absolutely ridiculous a bit. Only because I'm carrying so much. And. After I did my video, um, I thought I might need some contingencies. Like, um, I was sussing out my tent again, and I'm not sure <laughs> um, if uh, the single mattress I've got will actually fit in the tent. So, yeah, that's something I probably should have tried out beforehand. But that's why I've added the yoga mat as a backup. So, it'll be interesting. Like I said, I'm carrying a lot of water. We're, we're, we're sort of, we've got camera gear and everything. We've got water for drinking and for the meals. Um, even got three things of milk, long life milk. So I thought, oh well, if it's a nice night, I might have some hot chocolate. Just try it out. So we're trying out some food, we're trying out some drinks. 
try and out some gear. And that's why it's sort of like, oh, because we're toting so much stuff. Listen to all those cicadas. Cicadas, however you want to pronounce them. The track's not long. So let's go all out and just test it. And of course, for the longer trips, even cutting down, things can get heavy, especially if you, when you start adding a lot of food to carry for multi days. This is one night, so we only got one day, or two days and one night's worth of food, where I would shed the, the kilos or pounds, whatever you wanna use, where I would shed that would be replaced by food, I'd say. You know, we're doing a coastal walk here, but if we did more inland walk in that, we'd be looking for water sources, and so I wouldn't have to carry all the water I am. I'd, I'd research first and pace out roughly where water sources are because I've got the soya, so that helps. And it's like, as I'm walking this way, we're walking the one way, we can see if there are any water sources, so that way I know I can be a bit more liberal and not have to ration the water so much. So it'll be interesting to see. Anyway, I've yammed on enough. Let's keep going. Yes, yeah, so if you're wondering why it's shaky, I can't fit my camera with the gimbal in this bag just here. So I gotta take it off. So I've got the camera just handy so I can still film with this and not use my phone all the time. Because this is obviously the better camera. It's just without the gimbal, it might be a little shaky. So deal with it. <laughs> okay, so we're at Maitland Bay. Now the Right up there is where that lookout was, and we've walked all the way along there, all up in there, and then come down to the beach, and then we've walked all the way around the beach to here. And then we just gotta go, I don't know if you can see, it might be a bit dark. Just gotta go up there for the next part of the journey. But how beautiful is this place? Up there, that's where we're going. Do you see him? See the stairs? Okay, so we're still on the fire trail road. One thing the videos that other people have posted don't tell you is that there's a long walk on the, the fire break road. These roads. It's about a kilometer so far from the Maitland Bay exit of it. So we walked about a kilometer. I'd say we're pretty close to it and we're still not at the trail for Little Beach. So it is actually, if you've got a bit of gear to pack, like if you're doing a long distance hike or you're doing an overnight of this one, yeah, if it was just a, like a small pack with some food and some drink for a day hike, wouldn't be an issue. But if you're doing an overnighter and you've got to carry some gear, it's a challenging walk. So, a lot of the videos that we've seen about this, they show this little intersection 
and that's about it so it kind of implies that it only goes for like 100 meters but we've been walking a while so we're gonna keep on going 6.1 k's we've traveled so far and there's the sign the little beach which means we got about 200 meters going down there so we've just come from that way but we'll show you that later on Now it feels like we're walking into a rainforest. So we probably walked about two, three hundred meters. So that sign is a liar. <laughs> so we still gotta go down there. We're getting close. So tomorrow we gotta walk back up that hill. <sighs> Putty Beach, 6.5 kilometers. Well, we were planning on going all the way up and finishing the trail, but the walk is closed. Good thing we planned to camp at Little Beach. So I guess Little Beach is our destination and then we'll head back in the morning. So, okay. That's why we haven't finished the whole trail. Because it's closed. We made it. We made it to Little Beach. Bit of a bummer about the rest of the walk, but we made it to our camp spot anyway. Well, the mattress actually fits. I was just wasn't sure if it would actually fit. <laughs> I had the yoga mat there just as backup. So, that'll be interesting. Now, dig out the sleeping bag. Okay. So I got the fancy sleeping bag. Got my little light. LED light. So, it's just organizing the tent, seeing where I'm going to put everything. Hey, this should be interesting. Make a nice cup of tea while I wait for my beef teriyaki to cook. And trying out the new 360. So, so far, impressed. It bloody boiled really quick. So, not only did it boil enough for that, and then I put more in and had a cup of tea in no time. So, so far, impressed with the 360 yeah now i've got to buy a cup so right now i'm trying to use the lid of the pot as a cup so this will be interesting hopefully it won't collapse and burn me i'm actually better than i thought almost finished it quite a bit of beef yum uh, that's what dinner consists of Okay, so you can see the ocean. That's Little Beach. That's where we're camped at. And you can see the construction site here and uh, over there and it goes up. That's why we can't go any further than Little Beach. But there's this creek. Now we were, we know that there is a toilet. You can see over there. But there's no tap. But, 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 if you have a water filter, the nice surprise is this is fresh water. It's a freshwater stream. Doesn't look too healthy. But again, we got the soya squeeze and we're filtering our water. Doesn't taste the best, but if you add it with the Gatorade powder or coffee or tea, 
it's not a problem. Oh! Okay, and where did he go? Where did he go? There was an eel. No, oh, he's gone. I tried to get up here in time. Maybe you saw that when I was facing the camera up here. So, yes, there's eels in the stream. <laughs> but if you got a filter, not a problem. Just add something to it tea, coffee, um, or some sort of powder to flavor it. But also, we cooked with it and you can't taste anything. It doesn't change the taste of the food. Like I said, it just adds water, water. It's just got a little bit of a weird taste, but it's not like bottled water. So if you do come to Little Beach, bring a filter and you're right for water, as long as it's flowing. This one here, I just tried to steal some food. Okay, so there is a flaw with my mattress. <laughs> it does fit widthwise, which I was worried about. But as you can see, it's very high. So I definitely have to try and get a better, a proper sleep pad, I should say. Like the mattress is fine. It's heavy, it's a kilo and a half or so. But, yeah. That is the floor. And I'll have to do a review on this sleeping bag because it's awesome. It's really unusual. And as you can see, my LED lights. So this is inside the Nomad 2. So I've got a lot of reviews to do once this, this camping trip is done. Well, night one. I'm in my Nomad 2. <laughs> Love this tent. It's cool. It's tiny now. But like I said, you know, that's because I've got a single a mattress. <laughs> um, yeah. But I love the LED light. It saves on using my headlamp. And it's a lot brighter. And as I've shown you, you know, it lights up a lot more than a headlamp would. But yeah, so the sleep pad's the only problem. Uh, just, it was a big day. Uh, but yeah, I got a lot of gear to review. And so far, everything's holding up unreal. Anyway, I'm gonna try and get a little bit of sleep. Uh, yeah, so once everything's in here, it is a bit squishy. But hey, it's cool. Only on two hours sleep. Walk for seven and a half hours. Mm. And it's up here. That's me looking straight ahead. <laughs> That's the angle. <laughs> okay, let's start walking. So now the journey back begins. Putty Beach, 6.5 kilometers. <sighs> and four kilometers to Maitland Bay. Okay, that helps out. So now the long trek home. Probably should have left a bit earlier, but oh well. I ain't worried about lighting. <laughs> but everybody shows you this sign and they point up to there and it's like, that's a petty beach, it goes up there. Petty beach, it goes up there. And yeah, it's a little fire access trail, you know, for the rangers and that to get through and keep the things maintained. But what they don't tell you is it's at least, oh, I don't know. It'd be close to a kilometre at least. So expect a lot of walking on this. Um, it's not too bad because they actually use wood chips instead of gravel. Uh, I wouldn't want a fire to come through here, but it's actually easier on the feet having wood chips to walk on. So yeah, but it is a fair look. We got 6.1 Ks left according to that sign to get to Putty Beach. So that's our destination to go back to the car. 
So yeah, so don't just look at this and think, oh yeah, it's just like 100 meters and then you turn down. No, it's a fair little height. But as you go down here, we're gonna see how we feel when we get there. But there's a, a pathway to the left that takes you out to a lookout. So we'll see when we get there and if we feel like it, we'll go down there. So we're gonna take a little side trip. Yeah, I assume it's called Third Point because this is the Third Point Trail. And it looks like that. So we got Caves Bay down there. And then we got Maitland on the other side of that. Maitland Bay on the other side of that point there. And that point all the way down there, that was that lookout. The first, the first lookout. So we gotta go all the way down there and then down after that. So we still got a fair big hike. Yeah, it should be interesting. There are warning signs. Yeah, these rocks can be slippery even when it's dry, which is true. If you know anything about these sort of rocks. So, I didn't get the gimbal out, so forgive the shakiness. It's just oh, too much effort at the moment. My shoulders are killing me. Little Beach is around there. So we come up and around. And yeah, guys, there's flies everywhere. So... And they come out yeah, in your face, so a lot of people can't handle these, they feel a bit claustrophobic, but I tell you what, it keeps the flies off. It may look like a dag, it may look like an idiot, but I don't have flies on my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, but they're everywhere, I got from where I got on. So, but you remember, we're doing this in summer, uh, it's 30 degrees already, 30 degrees Celsius, so it's already hot, and then the hike with a 20 kilo pack. Um, it's like, oh my God, my shoulders are killing me. But, um, you know, learned some good lessons last night. It was really good. Uh, but yeah, this would be awesome in the cooler months. Cause like you would, you would not walk in the scrub bits, you know, with the patches of grass and all that. Cause there's the snakes around and all that. So yeah, we're not doing that. We're sticking to the pathways. Cause it, it, it's snake season, it's hot, but yeah, if uh, in the cooler months, yeah, this would be a really nice walk, especially in winter, I reckon. And then you could venture out a bit, there wouldn't be as many bugs and mozzies, mosquitoes. But yeah, it's an unreal little walk, you know, it's only six kilometers. I would recommend, I'm gonna walk back and talk to you. Um, oh no, I'll stay here. I've got a nice view by me. <laughs> um, I would recommend that you do this as a day trip. Unless you've got really good light gear. Uh, it was, it's nice to do over um, and camp at Little Beach. It's a pity we couldn't go further. Um, it's, it's better as a day one where you just got some drink you just got some food and maybe something, a jacket or that in case the weather turns um, and just a nice light backpack and there is a lot of stairs and ups and downs so if you're used to trekking poles, trekking poles will be handy even for a day walk. Um, but yeah, as sort of like cart and stuff, unless you're on a bigger hike that ends up coming through here, then um, yeah, carrying on gear unless you've got all the fancy stuff that's super light yeah nah it's better as a day one although we were talking about it and winter it wouldn't be bad you know we'd go through this again in winter it'd be cooler um, even with all the the heavy bags and that but just take it a bit slower uh, yesterday was 33 degrees or something and today's we're already at 30 so and we're only in the morning so it could get a lot hotter so uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying this. Remember, smash like, subscribe. <laughs> Help me out, it helps out, get it out there. Cause I know 96% of yous aren't subscribed. Yeah, I've checked the analytics, like you hear everybody saying. Just keeping my eyes down cause of snakes. But it's definitely worth checking out. And we thought we'd come out to the point. Hope that wind's not bugging up the camera, should have stayed down there. But it's about a kilometer there here and back to the path. 
so it's about a kilometer side track. Anyway guys, I'm gonna keep going. Check out some more. Okay, you see lovely Vanessa there. And this is what I was trying to get to you about the fire trail. It does go on a bit. Like the one down to the three point trail, that all up would probably be like 500 meters down, 500 meters back, maybe a tiny bit less. But this one just keeps going down. And you look at our other videos and they just show you the, the little point saying, oh, it's up this trail. Yeah, and it's about, oh, it's gotta be over a kilometer. You know, it has to be. So at least a kilometer of it is this trail here. And as you can see up top, I've got an umbrella. So we actually brought the umbrella just in case it rained, but the sun is so blurry and this is so open, there's no real shade breaks. So look, bugger it, no trees in the way. I'm gonna get the umbrella out and just enjoy the little walk down. It's nice and cool. And yeah, but see, you can't even see the end of it. So it goes down and around. This time, we're on the way down to Kays Bay and then back up over there. Having fun, getting sore and tired. Can't wait to get back to the car, to be honest. But still enjoying every moment. Always amazing how different things, places look on the way back at different times of day. But it's so much fun. Not much air around this side of the cliff. So, oh my God. Whew. It's very muggy and hot. I'm getting very tired, very sore. And this pack's getting really heavy. So everything, every step just seems a little bit harder. But it's all part of the fun. Don't you agree? Okay. Better concentrate before I fall down these stairs. Well, back on the ugly green chair. <laughs> anyway, guys, yeah, I, you know, uh, got to editing and realized um, the outro wasn't there. So it must not have been recording when I got back to the car. It was a long day and it was hot. And so I assumed that I thought it was recording and it wasn't. And then on top of it off, all the video I shot on my GoPro has stuffed itself up. So there was no GoPro footage of, of the little beach. That's what I went in the water with and everything. So unfortunately that didn't come out. So yeah, I had this big outro and so now I've got to make another one. <laughs> oh, and for the record, I'm not sponsored by Everlast. This was a cheap um, hat that I got from Kmart. Um, I got it because it's a lot thinner than most of the cheap caps that you get nowadays. So I thought I'd give it a run. So when I was editing the video, it was like, oh my God, this great big Everlast sponsorship thing looks like. And no, I'm not sponsored by Everlast. That'd be nice. They got some nice gear. Um, but yeah, so don't read anything into the cap. It was just, uh, what, $10 from Kmart. So yeah, and the only reason why I got it was because it was a really thin light hat. Well, I think I've said pretty much everything about the trail um, on the video that you've seen so far. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below and I'll answer them. Uh, I know, it, you know it's a bit long of a video for an overnight hike, but I wanted you to actually get a real sense of the hike because uh, the short videos that I've seen just haven't really captured it as w well as it should. So if you've stuck around this long, awesome. Help out the channel. I know most of you aren't subscribed. So hit, you know, hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and help this channel grow. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, I got a lot of reviews coming up of all the little gear and I'll have to tell you what happened with the, the mattress because I didn't carry that one home. Uh, but yeah. Until next time, guys, I'm Mark Shea. This is Exploring Australia. See ya! Yeah, so I'm laying in my tent. Yeah, I go with your fat chin. <laughs> well, I can't put it the good way. Oh, I guess I could talk like this. What do you think? Do a whole vlog just like this. <laughs> oh, God. What am I so much to do, so much to say, can't wait till tomorrow.
my shoulders are killing me.